Hello again. To conclude these mini lectures on chapter 14, this is the last chapter question. Describe the military turning points in 1863 and 64 that ultimately led to the Confederacy's defeat. Robert E. Lee's last victory was at Chancellorsville. It was named for a house very near the engagement. And while it was a victory, Stonewall Jackson was killed and Lee lost his right arm, as he called it. He was one of his key generals and he was killed during this battle. The first big turning point was the Battle of Vicksburg. This is a busy town and it was the only rail and river junction between Memphis and New Orleans. Capturing this town meant splitting the Confederacy in half. And this would cut Louisiana, Texas, and Arkansas off from the rest of the Confederacy. Lincoln believed that this was a key to a Union victory in the war because it would allow them to control the Mississippi River. And with the capturing of New Orleans, as we'll see, and the capturing of Vicksburg, the South is now completely cut off by the Anaconda Plan with the blockading with the Navy on the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. Now they control the Mississippi River and they have already captured the border states and control them as well. Grant laid siege to Vicksburg. Supplies eventually ran out and the Confederates were down to eating rats to survive and they pleaded with President Davis to either surrender us or reinforce us. And eventually Vicksburg will fall as Lee's troops are marching out of Pennsylvania. This, the idea after that appeal from the people of Vicksburg was what turns into the Battle of Gettysburg. And this is the second major turning point. Davis asked Lee to reinforce Vicksburg, but he had another idea. He would attack the North and force Grant to retreat from Vicksburg. And he also hoped the attack would persuade Copperheads and other sympathizers to force the end of the war on southern terms. This is where, and hopefully slavery then, would remain where it was before the war started. And again, there's another quick look at that map. If you'd like to look at this more detail, you can look at it at another time. On day one, there was initial success as the Confederates push the Yankees out of the town, but General Meade's forces hold up in the high ground in the hills and ridges surrounding the town of Gettysburg, and they regrouped. Now they had a strategic advantage, because on day two, Lee's forces attacked in waves, trying to dislodge them, and they were successful on the low ground in continuing to push the Union lines back, but they could not get these troops out of the high ground. And on day three, the final day of the battle, this is the symbolic end of the Confederacy. Pickett's charge as General George Pickett and 12,500 men, Lee sent them against the advice of General Longstreet to attack up Cemetery Ridge. And at the top of the ridge behind a stone wall, were 120 Union cannon and thousands of riflemen firing at these advancing columns as they tried to come up and take this position. Half of Pickett's division was killed in that first thrust. Lee asked him to regroup and charge again, and Pickett said, General, I have no division left. I cannot fulfill this request. 42,000 people died at the Battle of Gettysburg on both sides. Later in the year, Lincoln will deliver the Gettysburg Address, or a new national cemetery was created there. And at the end of his speech, he said that he believed that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom because of this conflict, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. The last turning point was the Battle of Chattanooga, or Chickamauga as it's called by the Southerners sometime. This was another key river port and railhead in eastern Tennessee and northern Georgia. It's a, it's a key control point. Originally, 
General William Rosecrans will attack and successfully take Chattanooga, and he will force Bragg into northern Georgia, into the mountains. But he continued to pursue him into the mountains, and he nearly got his command destroyed, because Bragg now had the advantage, one of the few times in the Civil War, where the Southerners outnumbered Northerners, and they had the high ground, and they decimated Rosecrans' division and forced them back into Chattanooga, where they then shelled this town for days. Rosecrans was able to telegraph Washington, asking Lincoln for reinforcements, and Lincoln told him to please hold on, I am sending forces. And eventually, armies under Sherman, Hooker, and the key one, George Thomas, they will succeed then in pushing Bragg's forces. And Longstreet also had divisions under Bragg. George Thomas was a native Virginian who remained loyal to the Union. And they will eventually dislodge Bragg from Lookout Mountain and Missionary Ridge and take this as another Union victory. Now, the significance of this is they have control of East Tennessee and the gateway into Georgia, which in 1864 and 5, if you look at those maps that are on the site, you will see Sherman's march to the sea and the devastation that he laid to all the towns he came to. This is the beginning of modern warfare, ladies and gentlemen. This is total war. It is not just against military targets anymore. But now, infrastructure is going to be destroyed as armies advance on different positions. They will rip up rail lines, making them useless. They will burn crops. They will burn commodity crops, which will enable them not to be able to sell them to raise any money. And this is the main reason, this march to the sea, that there are many Southerners who have great anger towards Yankees, or northerners to this day.